Welcome back everybody. We are doing the well over 1K follow-up on the St. Victor B5 Systems Rifle, or I guess in the case of this specific one, it's about the 5,000 round review because I've been testing a bunch of different parts on this thing and a bunch of different ammo over the past year. All right, so like I said, I have had this specific St. Victor for about a year. So a little over a year ago, I had reached out to Springfield and asked them, could I test one of these things? And they were cool enough to send one out to the channel. I made a couple of videos with it and I liked it enough to ask them, can I buy this thing and keep it? They said, yes, I said, thank you. So now it has its own little room here in the studio. So in that year, I have had the opportunity to test a bunch of different parts, several different types of ammo from just bulk of brass stuff all the way through spear self-defense ammo into the wolf and tull ammo steel, which is not always the best ammo. And I know I can already hear my AK guys out there saying, if it doesn't chew through steel, it doesn't deserve brass. To which I'll say it chewed through almost all the steel, but I did get some weird issues with like one out of every 100 or one out of every 200 rounds of that steel, which basically just didn't want to extract. And we will talk about more of that here in a minute. But we're gonna go ahead and take a good up close look at this thing, talk about how it's wearing in, the little things that I have changed on here and why, of course, talk about the overall performance and the price that you are gonna pay for one of these. Now, before we do that, huge shout out to all of my Patreons and make sure you guys get subbed up, get belled up, turn the notifications down there to all on. And if you like these things or anything else going on here or feel that I have deserved it, give this video a like. We're gonna go ahead and get into this St. Victor right now. All right, so I already have the St. broke down. Let's just talk about quickly the upper and lower receiver. So as far as these parts go, you're not gonna have any real wear on the receiver, the upper or the lower, unless it's been machined poorly or you're doing some pretty crazy stuff out there. The machine work, everything is just fine from the buffer tube assembly all the way through. Basic wear up in the mag well, just from doing exchanges. Everything's functioning fine. And then obviously I've got that Rave 140 trigger. Everything in there is doing exactly as I would expect, as well as the upper receiver right here. It's got some scratches. It's got some nicks from basic stuff out there. As far as internally, you can see it is all that normal coating wear up in there that we would expect. And then a little tough to see, but the feed ramps in there are doing just fine. Try and give you the best look I can in there. No problems at all, anything there. I've already got it broken down quite a bit more over here so we can really take a good dive into all of the small parts, kind of move that out of the way. Let's talk about the charging handle. So I did put a Tribe Defense charging handle on there. I just wanted to test it out. It was like 30 bucks. It is wearing excessively. So the stock charging handle that I had in here for far more rounds does not look this bad. This is not a great option. We will talk more about that in a little bit, but you basically, you get what you pay for when it comes to that. As far as the bolt carrier right here, you can see it is wearing exactly as you would expect. You get the coating wear across the gas key, a little bit wear across the sides on those corners where it's making contact everywhere. It's wearing in exactly as you would expect any other bolt carrier. You can see the staking right there, which has done very well. Everything in this bolt has been performing exactly as you would expect it, especially at the 5,000-ish round mark with some, uh, well, a bunch of steel through it. Firing pin, exactly the same. You can see it's got that little scoring right around here. Pretty much what you always get with every firing pin, the little marks here and there, but it's solid. It's a firing pin, generally don't see any issues there. Obviously, coating wear on all of the small parts here. What I wanted to focus on really was that extractor. So being that I ran so much steel through it and it really tore apart some of those steel casings because the steel casings had expanded in the chamber, you can see it's just very minimal coating wear there. That extractor still has all of the life to it. You can see that edge right there. So 
doing a great job and that's pretty much what I expected based on what the bolt is made out of. And to give you guys an example, this is one of the casings, okay? And you can see that that entire edge right there is just missing, just totally blown out, torn off. And that extractor just shredded that thing. Trying to pull it out right there, you can see just yanked the whole edge off, destroyed that casing trying to pull it out. So extractor is wearing very, very nice. As far as the bolt goes here, same stuff you can see up here, all of your just basic kind of coating wear on this. It's a little dirty still. I guess I'm not the cleanest person in the world right now when it comes to my AR. The lugs are doing great. All you're gonna see up there is that basic coating wear that is very normal at this point. So this one is magnetic particle inspected, as you can see, obviously right there, it's high pressure tested as well. The gas rings are doing just fine. Everything in here is doing exactly what I would expect of this rifle at this, like I said, right about 5,000 round mark. If you were looking for the detailed specs on everything, this version is the B5 system. So it has the B5 stock, the B5 grip. It's got an extended B5 trigger guard right there. Those are all polymer. Normally comes with a flat face MP3 coated trigger. It's got the 9310 bolt and carrier group. It comes with this rail comes with the flip up sights on it. And then of course that Springfield Armory proprietary muzzle brake. So it's a 4150 chromoly vanadium barrel in there. And it is a five, five, six NATO and a one and eight twist. And it is a Springfield labeled barrel, as you can see right in there. So overall, the thing has performed great. If you're looking for anything more detailed than that, you can check out the website description or my initial review on this. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the parts in here that have changed, if I would do anything different, and the overall value of this gun for how it comes. All right, so let's knock out the performance on this bad boy first, and let's tackle accuracy because everybody wants to say, well, how accurate is it? To that, I'm gonna say it's as accurate as you are. Accuracy is almost completely dependent on the end user as long as you're getting a good quality product. So the accuracy is there as long as it's there with you. As far as everything else, talking about the performance of this thing. Let's talk about how the thing actually feels out there. Quite honestly, it's very soft shooting out there. So between the brake, mid-length gas system, and the H buffer in here, does a very good job being very fast on follow-up shots and very flat out there on the range especially if you have good fundamentals and control of your rifle. Everything else in here performed exactly as I would expect. So let's talk about some of those things that came up with the steel ammo. About every one out of 100 rounds I had of that tull and steel, for some odd reason, just didn't want to extract. The steel just expanded in the chamber and basically turned this thing into a musket where I'd have to pound that casing out. Now that steel ammo did that into several of my other rifles as well, so it was not a problem with this. It is an ammo problem. Now, when it comes to steel ammo, that's just something you're gonna live with. But I had a couple thousand rounds of steel. This thing's got a 9310 hardcore steel bolt in it. So I figured why not tear through that ammo in this thing. I will say I'm kind of surprised the extractor on this lived because I'll roll in a photo here. It pretty much chewed a bunch of the rear end, the lip of the casings of that wolf and tull ammo, ripped that thing right off as it was trying to extract it prior to me having to pound that round out on my own. Let's talk about what I have changed on here and why. So one, the trigger. Now, even though this thing does come with an MP3 coated flat face trigger from the factory, you're just not gonna get the performance out of a competition or drop-in trigger like this out of a factory mil spec style sort of trigger system. You can get ones that are far better than basic mil spec, but you're just not gonna get the performance like you would out of this Rise Rave 140. If you're interested in that, I've got a video on it. It is definitely a solid buy. Coming upstairs, you guys can see I have that ambidextrous extended charging handle. Tried to go budget on that and try out one of those Tribe Defense ones. Saw it on sale for like 30 bucks. I would avoid it at all costs. As you can see in the video, you'll see this thing just kind of coming out of, out, of the sec out of space on its own and just flopping around out there as I was shooting. It's just not the greatest charging handle. The springs in it are pretty weak and the little arm here that attaches into and bites into the upper receiver is so deformed because it's so small that it really just doesn't function that well. So stick 
to the Radiant stuff when it comes to your charging handle. As far as the optic upstairs here, EOTech XPS2 on an ADM quick release riser. However you wanna ride that thing, how tall and what optic you choose is completely up to you. Some people love EOTech, some people hate it. Coming out on the front, you'll see that ProTac HLX Extreme Light from Streamlight. It's a great budget light option, not the best pressure pad mounting system here. There are other options out there from Cloud Defense that you can get to mount that pressure pad over here, but it is a solid and durable light, especially for the price point. And of course, you'll see that sling that's hanging out on there. That is from a company right there called Flatline Fiber. Great slings, been having a good time using those. Got a nice quick release right here for you to either get more or less room out of the sling on some QD points there. Again, all of that is personal preference. Let's dive right into the price. So for this rifle, as it comes equipped with the rifle, the B5 Systems grip stock, and it comes with the flip up metal iron sights, I've seen it as of the filming of today's video for $879. Now the MSRP, I think it's like $12.59 or something like that. But if you can find it for the $8.79, I would say that is an exceptional value for the way this thing comes and the performance that I have been getting out of this rifle. Again, I will tell you, watch as many videos as you can and get as much information as you can. These are test groups of one. I've had a great experience with this rifle. Honest Outlaw did not have a great experience with his rifle and that comes down to quality control. If you've got one piece that's out of whack in this recoil management or gas system, it can be an angry little gremlin. They're generally easy fixes, but issues happen, can happen to any manufacturer, and that's just the way it goes. There's always gonna be a fail percentage no matter how good the company is. Now for 879, I think it is a solid price. Now, if you get up into the MSRP where it's at about 1259 to 1300, you start getting into the BCM territory and it might be a little bit of a different story. But if you're into the Springfield brand and you can find this thing for that price, I think you are gonna get a solid setup that's outfitted very well. Well, that is what I've got for you all today. If you guys are interested in anything you saw here today, you can follow the build list. Make sure you get subbed up, get belled up, turn the notifications down there to all on. Huge shout out to all of my patrons for the support. You guys are awesome. And to Shall Not Comply for handling the clothing brand. For me and Pew Pew Tactical and a bunch of other YouTube people out there. You guys get out there, have some fun on the range. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. And I will see you guys on the next one. <laughs>